Hello everyone welcome back to Shahi Comics, and Mission, Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 ends on a cliffhanger setting up what's to come, we break down the film's ending and what's next for Ethan, and warning this video contains major spoilers for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 sees Ethan Hunt back in the swing of things, and the film's cliffhanger ending sets up Dead Reckoning Part 2 in a big way, while still standing on its own, directed by Christopher McQuarrie. From a screenplay he co-wrote with Eric Jindrisen, Dead Reckoning Part 1 lays the foundation for what's to come. Tom Cruise returns to play Ethan Hunt as he and his friends chase down the key to the Entity, an AI program that has evolved beyond its initial parameters, while being followed by the CIA, Gabriel, and Grace, a mysterious new thief. And after nearly dying on a runaway train, Ethan and Grace are saved by Paris, who pulls them up before the train car there and falls off the exploded bridge. Paris? near death, tells Ethan that the key unlocks the Entity's chamber, located on the Russian submarine Sevastopol. As Kittredge approaches, Ethan and Grace decide that he should take the only parachute and escape, leaving Grace to accept Kittredge's AS. Yet unspoken offer to join the IMF, Gabriel manages to escape after killing the Linger and fighting Ethan on the train. Believing he has the key, he's momentarily triumphant until he realizes Ethan stole it back, leaving Dead Reckoning Part 1 on a cliffhanger. And mission? Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1 ends with Ethan having claimed the key from Gabriel, now that he knows what it truly unlocks, his plan will likely involve heading to the bottom of the ocean to retrieve the Entity's chamber within the Sevastopol, with Gabriel having lost the key, there's no doubt he will continue chasing Ethan until he takes back what he believes is his, Gabriel has proven himself incredibly skilled, lethal, and resourceful, and he will stop at nothing until he hunts Ethan down. Ethan will also have to figure out a way to work against the Entity, which could mean employing non-tech devices and going to ground. And it's possible Ethan's new mission, should he choose to accept it, will involve working with Grace. She may now be working alongside Kittredge in the IMF, but he can't be trusted, so it's likely Grace will go rogue like Ethan has in the past. Ethan won't leave her to fend for herself, as they have bonded under dangerous, life-threatening circumstances and the longtime IMF agent will surely keep an eye on her in the meantime, Ethan has an even more treacherous mission ahead of him, and he'll need to step up if he is to stop the AI villain before anyone else gets a hold of it. And Dead Reckoning's entity, what it is, and why it wants Ethan dead explained. And ahead of Denlinger's death, he confirmed that the entity was an AI program created by the US government to aid the military in fighting foreign threats. The entity, however, developed independently and stopped taking orders from the military, escaping from its program to the internet, amassing great knowledge and power, this was on display when, after Dendlinger had injected the entity into the Sevastopol, the AI went rogue and blew up the Russian submarine with its own missile after its inhabitants believed they were under attack, the entity is sophisticated, an AI capable of infiltrating any digital program and sabotaging it before completely erasing itself to avoid being traced. And because the entity has access to all kinds of information, it's capable of evolving and determining people's actions before they happen, this is primarily why the entity wants Ethan that he's the only one capable of taking the AI down permanently, whereas Dendlinger and Kittredge wanted to control the entity for their own nefarious reasons, Ethan doesn't think anyone, or any government, should have the kind of power and control the entity would give them, but the entity wants to survive first and foremost, and it can't survive freely so long as Ethan is around to threaten its existence. And Gabriel has a history with Ethan as his existence in Dead Reckoning or Atkin? And Mission, Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 reveals that Gabriel has a personal history with Ethan, the film even includes some flashbacks, though it's to an event that was made up for Dead Reckoning. Gabriel was created for the film, but his history with Ethan, which seemingly involves Gabriel killing a woman Ethan was close to, is a bit of a retcon, it alludes to a past that has never been explored before now, Dead Reckoning Part 1 makes it seem like Gabriel existed in a previous mission, impossible movie, but his presence is more of a doorway into an unexplored part of Ethan's history. And Gabriel's existence is merely to explore Ethan's time before he joins the IMF, even while the event that led them to become mortal enemies is only vaguely alluded to, Gabriel hates Ethan, and kills the woman he's close to, as he does with Ilsa in Dead Reckoning Part 1. It's possible Gabriel and Ethan once worked together, though in what capacity remains unclear, and Ethan was pushed over the edge by Gabriel's actions, leading him to take Kittredge's offer rather than face criminal charges. Mission, Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2 might provide more answers, 
but it's likely the sequel will remain just as vague about the details. And Grace accepts Kittredge's offer how it affects her relationship with Ethan. And Grace was in a tight spot at the end of Dead Reckoning Part 1, with Ethan having escaped, and wanting to avoid prison time, Grace accepted Kittredge's unspoken offer to join the IMF, this puts her at odds with Ethan, but it also means she'll know what Kittredge's next moves will be, Grace is now in a position of opposition with Ethan, but joining the IMF could also make her his biggest ally, while Grace spent most of the movie dodging Ethan, they got to a level of trust by the end, and their partnership will likely be unaffected by Grace's new alliance. It could prove beneficial for them both. And how Mission, Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 sets up Part 2. And Dead Reckoning Part 1 leaves off on a cliffhanger that sets up what's to come in Dead Reckoning Part 2. Grace working with Kit Ridge creates some great tension between her and Ethan, and keeps Kit Ridge in the game for the foreseeable future. Ethan stealing the key from Gabriel also keeps him as an enemy for Dead Reckoning Part 2, and raises the stakes for their continued conflict. Mission, Impossible 7 splits the characters into three factions by the end, and though Gabriel no longer has the key, the entity is still on his side. And Dead Reckoning Part 2 will likely see Ethan and Gabriel racing to get to the submarine. With Kit Ridge and Grace not far behind, there's a lot that can go wrong, and the film's ending leaves enough room for more action and suspense to come, with shifting alliances and Ethan and his team probably forced into hiding until they can come up with a new plan that the entity won't be able to manipulate. Dead Reckoning Part 1 brings the characters' paths together before splitting them apart once more ahead of Part 2. It's possible the sequel will introduce a plethora of new twists, though Ethan's goals remain the same. And the entity's deeper meaning and mission, Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And the entity proved to be a formidable villain, the AI existence, as well as what it's capable of the more it evolves, sets a dangerous precedent. Mission, Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 suggests that AI is ultimately a threat, one that can't be controlled or contained should it get out of hand. The film posits that it will indeed get out of hand, and it's dangerous because it's been fed too much information. The entity's access to the internet means it can tap into global systems at once altering things and executing programs at will. And not only is AI the clear and present danger, but the problem is also how it's being used and manipulated by those in power. Governments would fight to take control of it, so they could do whatever they want without anyone knowing. The argument would be made, as it was with Denlinger and Kittredge, that the use of AI would be for national security reasons, but such a program would give control to those without good intentions. AI can be useful, but mission, Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 lays out the damage it can cause, and what could happen if it's controlled by intelligence agencies for all the wrong reasons. And we're in the end of the video now in another awesome video I will meet you again bye guys have a good day.